Hang on, tell us again. Let me tell you about a little girl who had a real hard time. Her mother's brothers committed the unspeakable crime. Mum was a raucous party girl. Dad was a drunken lout. He bashed up once too often and she finally kicked him out. Our little girl grew up in shame, not knowing right from wrong. In order to survive, she grew both devious and strong. But still, the milk of human kindness flowed warmly in her breast. She tucked the wheat beneath her wing and stood up to the rest. The sibling violence was a daily thing, or so it would seem, and despite her strength, it took its toll on the young girl's self-esteem. So she called the family to her and told them through her tears, You don't deserve a love like mine, so I won't be back for years. And she flew across to Tasman, started another life. She changed her name, worked the game, and scammed and got in strife. But still, a spark of comic humour twinkled in her eye. She made us laugh. She partied hard, though in her heart she cried. It was about that time that I met her, and I got to know her well. I tried to stop her self-destructing, though she gave me bloody hell, because embedded deep within her was a strong distrust of men. And despite the fact she loved me, I'm still one of them. And when my own self-destructive streak started invading our life, we realised we couldn't go on living as man and wife. But even then, the gift of God's forgiveness kept our friendship strong when she decided to go home and right her family's wrongs. Because though they'd cruelly used and abused her so many years ago, she'd dealt with it and she'd forgiven them. And she had to let them know. She burps and farts and sweats and stinks. She smokes a bong and likes a drink. She eats shit food and drinks and smokes. She's into smoke and shoots up coke. But she's a real fine lady. She was a lady of the night. She couldn't read and couldn't write. She laughs too loud. Her skirts are tight. She doesn't mind a stand-up fight. But she is a real fine lady. She knows no end of cunning ploys. She was a favourite of the boys. She played some naughty games with toys and we shared too many carnal joys. But she is a real fine lady. She's tattooed on both tits and arse and she makes out that life's a farce. But she sure knows how to treat a man. She lets him live. She understands. Yes, she's a real fine lady. And now she's changed to some degree and it's partly due to living with me. If you feel like living dangerously, I dare you just to disagree that she's a real fine lady. We stayed together about five years. We had lots of laughs, but too many fears. The rent was really in arrears because she had plenty of good ideas. And though I'm older by 15 years and had a couple of good careers, I'd never say that I'm superior to that real fine lady. Now she's gone that real fine lady and how I've missed that real fine lady, that staunch and raunchy foxy lady, that big hearted, hard working, wonderful lady, that caring, sharing, fun loving, daring, enterprising, empathising, excitedly fantasising, allowed to the life philosophising, loud mouth leerising, always bloody supervising, independent, self-sufficient, determined, proficient, strong-willed, faithful, Big, brave and beautiful, real fine lady.